GG Hi guys, Raftera here. I hope that you're having an awesome 2021 as always. Before anything else, I'd like to announce that my first article for runeterraccg.com should be up by the time that this video goes live. I'm starting an article series on runeterraccg.com where I will talk about decks that I think are good for climbing, specifically off-meta and fun decks to play. If you've been watching my videos for the past week, you'd know that I released a video on Cythria Matron, on Zed Snooze Button Elusives, and on Zillion Twisted Fate Control, I believe those two decks are very good for climbing and I wrote a more in-depth article on how to play those decks. So if any of those three decks are maybe one of your favorites from the decks that I feature in my channel, make sure that you check the article out. I think you will gain a lot from reading that one. I'll put the link to the article in the description and in the pinned comment of this video, so make sure to check it out. And speaking of ranking up, if you've seen my community post last night, you know that I'm now in Diamond 4 in my NA server. For today's climbing guide, if you've already seen the thumbnail and the title, you'd know that the deck that I use for climbing is Zoe Vi. During the last patch before the season us, I've already been seeing comments from you guys, some um, asking me to feature this deck, to play this deck, or even to make a guide. And the time is now, I tried the deck out because I haven't featured this deck yet. And it worked out very well for me. It was a very easy climb from Platinum 2 up to Diamond 4. It was actually maybe the easiest climb that I've done, mainly because I'm using now a very powerful off-meta deck. If you're not aware, this version is the highest win rate version on Mobalytics, and if you check the leaderboard, if you're in NA, this is also the deck being used by um, this person. I don't know how to pronounce this, the Flebotomist TV. Anyway, he was rank 1 earlier, he's rank 2 now, so if you inspect his uh, deck, this is also the deck that he's using. So this is a very powerful deck. If you're stuck at any rank, this deck will for sure help you rank up. And regarding the deck, it's very straightforward. I think this is the strongest invoke deck right now. We're using Zoe and Vi together with other invoke cards like Star Shaping, The Fangs, Solari Priestess, and Spacey Sketcher. With Zoe Diana being not too hot right now and Aphelios being nerfed during the past patches, we're not really left with any strong pure invoke decks. Um, and I believe that Zoe Vi is now the way to go if you're an invoke player and if you're looking for the strongest version of the deck, this is the deck to go. The deck is very straightforward. In the early game, you want to play maybe Zoe and Ballistic Boat and Mountain Goat in order to apply pressure and mainly survive the early game. Sometimes you will level up the Zoe, but you don't need to level up Zoe in order to win. And in the mid to late game, you want to play Vi. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to level up Vi. Leveling up Vi is very easy in this deck because we're running lots of cards that generate other cards. For example, we have Ballistic Bot. Every um, ignition that we cast will be one proc for Vi. And a neat trick with Vi, if you combine it with the gems from Mountain Goat, each gem will give Vi actually two attack because he gains one from the gem and one from Vi's effect. But the deck is very flexible. You can also win through any of the high cost invokes from Star Shaping, the high cost elusive um, Celestials. You can win through that. Sometimes you win through a uh, Zoe win condition. You can also win through elusive damage. You have Sub Percival, which in the late game will be a 5 mana 5 5 elusive that lets you draw a card because we're playing lots of cards with different names in this deck. It's very easy to activate the effect of Sub Percival. Most of the time, you will actually win through elusive damage. Um, a tip that I would like to give you if you have gems from Mountain Goat and um, Mentor of Stones, um, you'd want to preserve it on an elusive unit because usually you damage their nexus through elusives and then finish it off with Mystic Sharpas get excited or you win through by level up. Against aggro, we have all the chump blocks that we need. We have Spacey Sketcher, which we can get um, other cheap units if we need to, just to chump block if we manage to survive the early game. Um, we have heals in the mid game through um, star shaping, through the fangs, and through guiding touch. The fangs in particular is very powerful against aggro because it provides lifesteal, it provides a unit on board, and you can get one more unit potentially from the invoked from fangs. Against control decks, you have to be very careful what you invoke with Solari Priestess. 
Solari Priestess is one of our sources of hard removal in the deck if you're able to get Fallen Comet, say, against Deep, against Nautilus, or against um, Thresh Nasus. If you're able to get it against Nasus, you're also be going to be okay. And speaking of Thresh Nasus, I think that this deck is very good into Thresh Nasus because we are running Hush. And as you know, Hush is the nemesis of Nasus. So if you're up against that deck, even if you don't have Hush in hand, always try to bank 6 mana so that he will have to think about Hush. Sometimes just by bluffing, you will be able to waste his turn because he do doesn't want to attack with Nasus. And probably one final tip that I can give to you regarding this deck is uh, Iterative Improvement. This is a very flexible card. Normally, you would want to use this on um, Subversible. However, you can also use it with Ballistic Bot or even with the Fangs to get more lifesteal against Aggro. Some other targets against Aggro, you can use it with your opponent's units. That's something that even I usually forget. When you have iterative improvement in hand and you're not sure what to do, make sure that you also look at your opponent's units because maybe you can copy something useful. So just remember that. When you have iterative improvement, don't be stuck at looking at your units. Look at your opponent's units as well. If you're looking for a strong, fun, high skill ceiling deck, this is the deck for you. Even myself, I am not yet a true master with this deck. But I was still able to rank up very easily from Platinum to Diamond. I believe this is definitely strong enough to take you to Masters if you just practice and play with it. As we, as I showed you already, the number two ranked guy in Masters in America is using this deck. So if you're ever doubting whether you need a deck for climbing, this is a good deck for climbing. There's proof, guys. Number two ranked Master in America is using it. That's it for the deck explanation. If you have any questions or if you have anything to say to me, Leave it in the comment section below. Comments really help my channel to be recommended to other people. The YouTube algorithm is more likely to recommend my channel to other users if there are lots of comments on it. If you like the video, if you like my content, don't forget to leave a like. And if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe. It's a big help for my channel. So push that subscribe button. Maybe you just forgot to do it. With that, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. Good luck climbing. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Deep. Uh, we can't exert early pressure against Deep. We might be unfavored here. We always keep the Zoe. Is Solari Priestess even good? I guess the best thing we could do with Solari is like get the Comet for the Nautilus. Might be worth it. Nice, we get the Vi again. We just have to hope he, he tosses away the 2C Scarab, so that's good. We just have to hope he doesn't have Vile Feast next turn. Maybe I should have summoned the Zoe next turn so at, at least I threaten the Pale Cascade. Yeah. The fact that I summoned Zoe this turn, he won't hesitate to use Vile Feast next turn because he knows that I won't get the draw with Pale Cascade. But if I summon the Zoe on this turn, he might hesitate. Yeah. Lesson learned always summon Zoe on turn 2. If you're attacking on evens. But he doesn't have a, luckily he doesn't have Vile Feast, but that could have been a bad play for us. Good. Stalking Shadows into Dead Bloom. That's a quick quick way for him to choose. Oh I didn't I didn't get the comet. What would be good? Oh this is bad, I didn't get the comet. The warrior maybe to get rid of the Maokai? I wanted the comet there. Fresh is worth at least twice as much. I mean, it's not even worth to save the Zoe here. I'm just gonna die. Better. I thought I would use the super cool star chart, but this is a lot better. Ballistic bot is a lot better. I think our win condition here is Vi. Yeah, it's prob our win condition is probably Vi. So no more Maokai. Good still Joel Hunters. It's time to super cool. But I value the draw more, I think. We'll be able to level up Vi relatively fast. So that will kill my ballistic bot. Do I have better thermo targets? Maybe I just thermo beam that. Maokai? Maybe Maokai? Yeah, it's just a it's just a ballistic bot. I don't think it's worth saving. Oh nice, good draw. That's a good draw. Stare at the abyss. We can get excited, the abyssal eye. This is perfect. Perfect! 
Why might be the win condition? So we will pass priority here. Get the Vi to 10 attack. If he's smart, he just passes. Please don't pass. Please don't be smart. I want you to be a fool. Nice, we level up the Vi. That's super great because we have another Vi in hand. So even if he gets rid of this one, we're still gonna be able to deal a lot of damage. It's the Vi win condition. I'm just worried about the Nautilus. But he's not yet deep. He's still 8 away from deep. I think I need to get my anti Nautilus. And I don't think I need to protect the Ballistic Butt. Or we could just kill the. Oh, nice, nice. Fallen Comet is nice. We could just kill the Maokai with the Vi next turn, right? So he drags there. I wonder what he drags with the Joel Hunters. Probably not the Vi. I don't need to Mystic that, right? There's not. There's nothing in his deck that inflicts. Inflicts 1 HP. And I have another Vi. I need to leave the Maokai alive because it's how we deal damage. I could Thermo here and hope he doesn't have a way to level up Maokai next turn. I'm gonna reserve mana for Fallen Comet. He has double toss. That might be his way to level up Maokai here and kill my Vi. But I don't think that's the case. So he is deep now. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is it worth it to use the Vault Breaker? For 6 mana? He might have heals. He might have heals. Let's not throw. Let's not throw. If he uses Nautilus here, we have uh, Falling Comet. The, mo the, the turn that he uses Nautilus, we use Falling Comet. That's okay. It's fine. So it's the Vire of Death is at 5 mana right now. Just have to remember that. Nice, 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 nice. Good, good. That's a lot of tempo loss for him. I reserve this gift especially for you, Nautilus. This is why I was keeping Solari Priestess for this exact moment. Exact moment! GG. Uh, let's go. GG. It's still GG, right? G. Got him. Vi win condition, guys. Don't underestimate the Vi. And that's that really makes her strong. The fact that even if she dies while striking, we still get to deal the five damage. That's really strong. Trundle Ash! <laughs> oh my god. If I get beat here, I'm gonna explore this concept. I love seeing off meta decks on ladder. Um, always keep Mountain Goat. It's really good, right? Um, Trundle Ash, what do I need to expect? Maybe keeping one Solari Priestess to get the Comet against the Trundle might be useful. Oh, I, by the way, this is a scenario where you summon the Zoe. Um, I summoned Zoe here because if I don't summon Zoe, you could like summon a one drop and then use Sharp Sight. I guess Spacey Sketcher, a super cool star chart is fine. Trades very well into the Avarosan Sentry. Charger? Charger seems good. Let's make it so that he can't attack easily. Nice, Vi. I love Vi. I love Vi. Patience. I'm just gonna go attack all in next turn. That's a sign of a brittle steel. Yeah. Chase me. Chase me. 
So we just attack again next turn. Oh, that's... I could iterative improvement on the Yeti. Iterative improvement on the Yeti is actually a super strong play. Oh, Grand Plaza! Wow! It's been a while since I saw you, friend. I don't need my champs anymore. I think the Traveler is good, just so we get more invoke stuff. It's been a while, Grand Plaza, my friend. Ah, oh, shit. There's no way I can save the Zoe, but using Iterative on the Enrage Yeti is something that I, uh, that I would like to explore on. Maybe I can bait him to pass? See, that's stupid. Okay. I can Equinox that one. Or Crescent Strike. Yeah, Crescent Strike is really good here. I don't want to get the Grizzled Ranger stun. This is not about saving the Zoe, this is about him getting value out of the Challenger from Grizzled Ranger. I think I need to go for the Iterative on the Yeti this turn. Then I still have the option to go for Vi. Do you or do you not have sharp sight? Stands for violence. She could have troll chant or sharp sight. I think I should play her. Uh, no, troll chant still kills him. Sharp sight still kills, still kills it. Hey. Okay. That's fine. Uh, the mistake there was. Maybe I should have used the other Vi, but if I used the other Vi, the Trandel would have lived. Because he had um, troll chant, but <laughs> I will admit I was not thinking about it. But during that time, is Hush even useful here? Force you to use a combat trick and level up my Zoe in the process. I'm pretty sure you don't have Elixir of Iron because you would have used it last time. He could use another troll chant here. No troll chant. That's also good. Pretty good for him, but we already leveled up the Zoe. We're about to invoke. Whoa! Ah, oh, I'm gonna use you later. Ah, oh, I can't use Fangs and Vi. I guess I just go wide for now. There's no really no use to summoning Vi here. We can't level up the Vi anyway. I'm just gonna invoke stuff. Oh my god, this is great. I am more myself than ever. This is great. Crescent <laughs> Strike is great against the Trundle next turn. He does have double Ice Pillar, which makes it a bit scary. I think I'm gonna wait for his third summon before I use Crescent Strike. Good, Yeti. Kill, kill. kill, kill. Yeah, this seems like a good Crescent Strike now. The value is too high if you don't Crescent Strike here. I think that's okay. Okay. Um, he could have a rally, and then I can use Mystic Shot to stop the rally if he goes for that play. Vi first, yeah, Vi first. Then we can go for the Great Beyond next turn. I'm playing around rally, it's the only way we he kills my unit, that's why I didn't use the Mystic Shot yet. Now if he goes for the rally and goes to challenge my Vi... Oh, that's another way. Single combat. This might be better. Yeah, th this will put him at Mystic Shot range. I don't think his deck has healing. Nice, we win. He, he should not have healing. You don't have wrist heals. Nice, got him. 
Reserve being patient with that mystic shot really paid off. Oh Elise. Double fangs is good. Although we might need some early units. Maybe just one fangs is Okay. If we if we keep the two fangs and then we don't get early units, we're kind of fucked. The one fangs is nice. Oh nice, nice, nice. The hand is good. The hand is good. Excellent. Nice the saboteur. So we just trade the Zoe. We just don't take any damage here. We just use Zoe as a blocker. It's totally fine. Don't get greedy guys. Especially in the aggro matchup. Leveling up the Zoe won't win you the game. Surviving will win you the game. We are a very high value deck where we generate lots of stuff. I just pass. I don't want to trade the house spider. I pull the string. Could get excited the Elise. I'm afraid of him have him using the We can Mystic Shot that one. I don't think we can afford to like get excited the Elise here. If I pass, does he just pass back? But if he passes back, that's good for me. Nice. I can kill the Elise. No issue here. I do this first. Then I attack with my Mountain Goat. I need to get the draw, I need to get the draw. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're gonna take 8 damage this turn, is that fine? It should be fine. We can kill the Elise with the get excited into the... Get excited with into the... Gem here. Or into that. If I alternative improvement and take the house spider, I only have two mana left. I won't be able to kill the Elise. I mean, if I do, if I use get excited now, he might summon another Elise. Then my efforts will be in vain. I could just do this. Make make the ballistic bot a fearsome blocker. Then see what he does. Very nice. We have double star shaping. We should be okay. He only has one card left, guys. We have fangs and star shaping. We can iterative improvement on the fangs if we just want more lifesteal. This should be GG. Just want more fearsome blockers. Maybe we just take it. Okay. I will always have 5 mana up. So I can afford to spend 3 mana here. Just have to not throw. Fuck it, I, I, I'll start shaping now. Let's not take unnecessary risks. Just start shaping now. Great Beyond! I'm gonna use it on turn 9. I'm not gonna go turn 7. I just leave star shaping alive. Literally the only way we lose if we f is if we throw this game. I think that's GG. That's okay. There's no two card combination that kills me from 12, right? GG. Oh, finally, Thresh Nasus. Um, so we're looking for Hush. Hush is everything. Hush is everything in this matchup. If you ha we have Hush, we have a chance. Well, so far, no Hush. So no chance yet. The 
desert by my side. I don't like that. I don't like that. Four damage? Can I afford to take four damage? He'll happily trade here. Zoe can die to a lot of stuff. I don't think there's value to keeping it alive. That the HP might matter if I get aggroed down. Nice. Free attack. So he doesn't have a turn through play. Um, if he passes, that's a sign of Merciless Hunter. Yeah, Solari Priestess is fine here. And we just invoke another one. Those choices aren't really that good. It now all depends if, is if we can get the hush or not. Interesting that he doesn't attack there. I think I just take this attack. There's a chance he's waiting for the Thresh in order be before getting into trades. Nice, we inflict 3 more damage. This damage matters by the way. What's darkness to the Unseen? The Traveler. But Crescent Strike could take care of the Thresh next turn maybe. That's tough, that's a bit of a tough choice. As expected, it's the Thresh. However, we can kill the Thresh next turn with the Vi. As long as we don't sacrifice many units here. <clears throat> Golden Sister for the lifesteal and for the elusives. I mean, he's... what are the chances of him running Vengeance? Very low, right? I don't think he's running Vengeance. Oh, fuck. Not good, I burned the I burned the fangs. Fangs is actually sometimes useful in this matchup. Looks like we get to level up the Vi here unless he uses Vi um Glimpse Beyond on his own Thresh. I can level up the Vi because the gem will increase its attack by one and trigger the Vi effect. Which would which means that Vi would have ten attack. Oh wow, he, he can level up the Thresh. Like, he could Glimpse Beyond and um, Vile Feast. Let's hope that's not the case. Okay. He goes for Box. Insane play. Nice play, nice play. He prevents the Vi from leveling up. Wow. Yeah. At least we at least we prevent the Thresh from leveling up as well. Ah, oh, harsh, just in time. Just in time. Godsend, that was a godsend. The gems will be crucial, I think, to be put on the elusive golden sister. He doesn't have anything against elusives. That might be our way to win. Although Charger just dies to a lot of things. So next turn I have 10 mana. If I summon the sisters I can use one gem. I already have 3 mana left. It's fucking scary. I need to have mana for Hush plus get excited just in case he goes for the just in, just in case he goes for the siphoning strike. I need to pass. I I can't I need to reserve six mana. He could go. Si he could like kill his spirit leech through Ravenous Butcher or through Rite of Calling, and then use Siphoning Strike. So I need to hush there, and then if I use Get Excited plus Hush, he just uses Rite of Negation. If he's smart, he kills this first. He gets a slay in any way before using the Siphoning Strike. He's not smart. Did not. Do I need full mana next turn? 9 mana? I think I have all the mana I need next turn. 9 mana should be enough. This will threaten a 2 turn, two turn clock. 
Two turn clock threatened. He uses right here, that's good for me. He has 9 mana left, he could still go for right of negation, siphoning strike into right of negation. I think he, we should do this so that he cannot siphoning strike into right of negation anymore. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Okay. We were two. Okay, no siphoning strike. I, I'm, I'm just lucky here. I really want to use the get excited on his face. Okay, as long as Thresh doesn't level up. But it will probably level up. Okay, 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 okay. Down to 2 HP. I have double ballistic bots. I just need him to tap under right of negation and then I'm good to go. If he taps under right of negation, I'm good to go. <sighs> We're gonna summon double ballistic bot here to threaten the lethal next turn. We need to prevent one slay, I think, just to be super safe. I think this is important. I think this is important. Preventing one slay is important. That could be the difference between him being able to use atrocity or not. Okay. This is about who can threaten the the kill first. So he has 11, he still has enough to threaten atrocity. Atrocity plus right of negation. But as long as he doesn't have the other slay yet, we're good. This might be my best chance to go for the kill. If I let this turn pass, next turn he has mana again for right of negation plus atrocity. It's gonna it's gonna depend on who's rushing or not. It's so hard because if we use uh, get excited, he right of negation suddenly. Oh, GG. Got impatient, boy. No. No, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing. That was close, that was close. Oof, fuck. Discard aggro. Uh, so we just need healing, early units, then we're good to go. That Thresh Nasus game hurt my head, dude. Um, Vi is always good to keep, and I think I'm keeping Ballistic Button and Spacey Sketcher. Is the iterative improvement could be good against the House Spider. 2 damage, I think I'm still fine taking 2 damage. I don't want to discard any of my current cards. Current, any of the current cards that I have in hand. Or damage. Zoe is just a chump block here. The party has arrived. Party. If I use ignition, I could threaten the arena battle caster. But that would mean that I have to Zoe now. Yeah, I think this is the way to go. 
I I need to cast the ignition now. This is the only efficient way to do it. I need to cast the ignition because I need to threaten the arena battle caster. I'm just gonna use Zoe as a blocker next turn. Something like a if he summons a house spider, that would be the best case scenario for me. Hush is also good. If he uses crowd favorite. Moon Silver. The other choices aren't that great. Mm, fuck. I should have just gone with the iterative. And we're gonna trade everything here, and it's gonna be trouble for us. That's not good, guys. I think I need to do this first the level up on the way. Not good, not good. That was so high roll for him. At least we have star shaping, but it's still dangerous. It's super dangerous. But that's a good target for iterative. That's a good target for iterative. He's running out of cards. No, he's not. It's a rummage. We need life seal. We need life seal bad. I misplayed last turn. I misplayed last turn so hard. Last turn, I should have just iterative on the Zonite Urchin in order to get the blocker. Ah. <sighs> now we just want to go wide as wide as we can. That's why it is humanly possible. GG. Double get excited. Jinx. Mystic shot plus get excited. GG. I misplayed last turn. Huge misplay by me. I I I I risked the I risked the super cool star chart when I should have just iterative on one of his one cost units in order to get the blocker down. Okay, so we picked. Oh my god, it's a mirror match. I don't know what to keep. How does this work? Pick the one who has the Zoe wins, or the one who has the Vi wins. No, the one who has the Zoe wins. I have the Zoe. Do I win? Nice. So he has. He doesn't have the Zoe. If I'm able to protect the Zoe, I might be good to go. But he has a Mystic Shot and lots of ways to kill the Zoe. Another one. Um, Equinox could be good against the bot. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't have a thermo, although he could have another mystic shot. <laughs> There's no way to protect the Zoe in this matchup against a mystic shot. But Equinox is huge, by the way. Yeah, I just kill it now before it grows too big. You are the future. Uh, I don't want to play the Vi into Thermo Beam. I can go. Or maybe even better, the move should be to iterative improvement on the Ballistic Bot. Okay. It's fine. Although I w I'd want to use iterative improvement if he uses the the cat subversible. I think that's the best target for iterative. Uh, 
I don't know if I hush that though. I definitely Equinox here. I, I don't know if I hush this one. It's tricky. Probably not because I have Vi. Perfection. I'm just gonna be really scared of a uh, Thermo Beam next turn. We have the Vi leveled up already. I don't think I want to risk the Thermo Beam. Is there any way to bait the Thermo Beam out safely? Why Vi? He, us he just Thermo Beams. Although I, I might have the read that he doesn't have Thermo Beam. Because he didn't use it the first turn against my Zoe. I'm just gonna do the pussy move of passing priority. Fuck, I want to buy. I'm doing this my way. Oh, he has it. He has it. The fucker has it. Do I have to hush the Zoe now? Do I have to hush the Zoe. I can't let the Zoe level up. I really think I need to hush the Zoe before it goes out of control. So in order to do that, I don't want to summon uh I don't want to summon an elusive yet. He already used two mystic shots. Got the third mystic shot? That's unfair. It's fucking unfair. Why does he get three mystic shots? Why do you get three mystic shots? You. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you for the mystic shot. At least your Zoe will die. That was close. That was a close one. I probably want to copy it first before killing it off. I can like stun right if he goes for anything. That's okay. That's okay. Wow, that's huge. The star shaping is kind of big here. I'm gonna start getting my invokes on. Bask in her radiant blessing. Yeah, I need to get that as well. I need to get that as well. I need to use Cosmic Inspiration too. Probably next turn. I should have not used the Solari Priestess here. We can kind of put him on a clock though. Something like this. Do you open attack here? Let's cast this now. Even let's even out the board. It was a big misplay on my part that I played Sol Solari Priestess last turn. I think we'll be able to grind him out nicely. The, 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 with the challengers, we can slowly kill his board. So we can also do that with Vi. Nice, nice, nice. No hush, no hush. Coming to save the day. So far, so good. I do have my hush, friend.
three cards left for both of us. Nice, nice. Huge, huge, huge. My journey ends. It's huge. Witness perfection. Okay, so no stun, no stun. Okay. Why did he pass? Why did he pass? Let's get the draw now before. Okay. Nice, nice. Yeah, he's gonna be sad with my li living legends next turn. <laughs> nice! That's a knockout! Three more wins, and we're diamond. The climbing guide shall be complete. Jinx, Draven, Aggro. So at least one sharp star shaping is fine, I think. Only one, though, only one. One star shaping is fine for the heal. I like it, I like it. I hope you don't have like dating poro or something. Oh yes, yeah, it. Walk. Oh yes, a dating poro, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we don't get the super cool star chart. Reckon. Yeah, seems good. Yeah, TBH. I just, I just take this. It's gonna, it's always gonna happen. That trade is always gonna happen. Hush is good for the crowd favorite, but we don't have a good defender against the crowd favorite yet. Just takes this. Actually, we have a good defender. Uh, crowd favorite only has one HP. Almost forgot. Hmm. Nice, good draw. I just go, I just do Mystic Shot now. So that he doesn't increase the attack of the others. Just need a second. In a second. It doesn't make much of a difference whether we defend with one Ballistic Bot or two Ballistic Bots. This way I want him to not attack with the flame chompers nice we get to kill one flame chomper which i think is pretty big if i summon the ballistic bot he simply drags the two of them with flame chompers and then we don't kill anything i might as well go with that i'm gonna go lifesteal probably but let's pass priority first and see what he does stun we would be good but I also need the draw. Yeah. Stun would be good, but I also need the draw there. If he takes the bait, we'll be able to kill the Jinx with the Mystic Shot next turn. Nice. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Killing the Jinx immediately next turn. Unless, of course, he has another Jinx, then it's no longer worth it. The people are my strength. Strength. Fuck! I made a mistake! Okay, ready. Fuck! I needed to hush. I, oh, I made a mistake. That was a huge mistake. Yeah, oh, I made a mistake. I should not have summoned you. I should not have summoned you. Ah, 
Ah, that's a good target for... That's a good target for iterative improvement. As long as you don't have Jinx, of course. Although things are looking pretty damn good so far. I think I need to Vi. I either Vi or Iterative the... I'm not afraid of a lot of stuff here. Bye. Will you commit your entire hand? It's not worth it. Do I use star shaping now? I think I do. To level up the Vi. Yeah, we're gonna use it anyway. Oh, GG. Knockout! One win away from Diamond! It's so easy to climb, guys. So easy to climb. Okay, Pirate Agro. If, I, if against Agro, you always have a chance. Never say no against Agro. I think Double Zoe is kind of bad. Zoe is just a blocker in this matchup. You don't keep double Zoe. You want to play on curve, which is perfect. We have Mountain Goat here. We also have a Vi. Where's my axe? What's it doing over there? Ejun rear guard. <laughs> I hope he doesn't open. Don't open attack, bro. We just sacrifice the Zoe here, I think. Just because we have another one, we should sacrifice the Zoe. Yeah, we should just sacrifice the Zoe. We have another one in hand which we probably won't use. We don't want to use 5 mana just to stun something. <laughs> Triple Zoe. Oh hey, what's that? Snake? Give me the snake. Uh, do I want to discount anything? The Vi? Maybe discounting the Vi is good. Looking for trouble. It's um, choosing the Moon Silver was the correct decision there. Very correct. Time for orders. And we just lock with the Zoe again. Because we have another Zoe in hand, it literally doesn't matter. Don't be greedy, guys. Having the star shaping is such a good security. And I think we level up the Vi here. What you doing over there? We just need blockers. We just need blockers. If he deve if he develops next turn, if he develops next turn, we can iterative into the Arachnoid Sentry. Fire. Yeah, seems good. We might regret that a bit. We might regret that a bit. Let's see. I think personally it's fine. Because we still have star shaping. <laughs> GG. One win away, guys. Let's get it. Let's get it.
Mono Fiora again. We look for the hush and don't commit mistakes. Um, Solar Priestess is also good to get the to get the thing. The invoke. Oh, of course, the invoke. The the blade rate. What am I talking about? Not sure if we summon the Zoe. It's just a free kill. So we just get the obliterate. We have the Vi, no hush yet. Return of the Stars could be a Vi or a Zoe. Both of which are, aren't really great options here. Be a fat unit like the warrior will do. They would fall by my blade. Still no hush, still no hush. I need to get the obliterate maybe. Stand the like oh, it's not even worth it to use Solari Priestess anymore. Nice, nice, we get the hush. That's really good. Really good. He just passes. He should just pass here. Unless he's crazy, he was a yielding spirit. Okay. He's trying to force out the hush. If I hush and then he pale cascades, I mean, if I I hush and then what could he do? He could repost. Then my hush is gone. I I think I just look for the obliterate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're not going to overdraw. So I'm good. This is like really, really dangerous territory. If we don't get the obliterate here, we're in trouble. Nice. Good shit. It's only two out of four. GG. I'm gonna let him get the kill first and then use Fallen Comet. Probably have another Fiora. That's so far away from kills though. They would fall by my blade. Now he has to deal with the hush. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We do have to discard here. Probably you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, now we're fine. We are good to go. Double hush, always good. I'm doing this my way. Nothing to hold me back. Um eh? For the honor of try me. What's the play? Freeze. Okay, I don't I don't want to draw. Let's use the first hush. Strike without worry. Cool. So he only has four cards left. Hmm. The destroyer is really good here. I mean the scourge is really good. Yeah, it looks that looks super crisp to me. I like the scourge. We're just gonna end the game, I guess. Favela. Sharp side. This is fine because he doesn't get the proc on the Fiora. But 
does he do here? Warrior. So he only has two cards left now. We use we used double hush already. He used one sharp sight. So he has another Fiora, which is a repost. What will I not use? Probably you. Probably you. Probably you. Okay. Okay. So he has one card left. He gets two kills. I should be fucking careful here. I'm gonna attempt to kill it with the sleepy trouble bubble. See what he does. Could either single combat or elixir of iron. Or though I doubt he has elixir of iron or flash freeze, elixir of iron or troll chant. Let's try to kill him. Even if we don't kill him, he'll be down to one HP. <laughs> nice, diamond, GG. Gigi. <sighs>